today i'm delighted to be joined by roberto michelle who recently has transformed his life and his body losing 105 pounds with juicing now <laughs> it wasn't a normal juice fast roberto did was it 177 days 182 days wow wow so it's, it's progressed since then so over six months on juice so um without further ado roberto what what made you yeah what made you embark on the juice fast uh before i start let me say thank you for having me i greatly appreciate it and uh for the people who follow you who support your podcast i just want to greet them peace and blessings and thank you it's a pleasure to be here with you today and uh to answer the questions uh I'll give you a little chronological explanation as far as it's been a long time coming because pre-COVID, we're talking about 2019, I was diagnosed with diabetes and I was prescribed a CPAP machine. And during the test, uh, the doctor, they realized that, you know, the test, when they plug you through all these machines, they make you sleep at the hospital. They realized that I would stop breathing about 90 to 120 times a night. So they prescribed me this machine that, that would pretty much every time you stop breathing, that will kick some air down your throat and, in a way, revive you. Uh, medically, I'm probably not doing the best explanation, but your followers, they're pretty familiar with what the CPAP machine is. And I was prescribed to sleep with this. And I slept with it for like two, three months, and I couldn't get used to it. And I told my doctor, Dr. Page at the time, uh, I, I don't know, I, I can't do this. And she said, you have a few options because this can save your life. You can sleep with this and, and stay healthy until you get better, or you can change your life yourself. So at that time, uh, for the people who don't know, uh, Paul's Law, that's my real brother, same mother, same father. He's on, uh, on all the social platforms. He was doing like a water fast at that time. And we fast forward to 2021. So I was willing to do anything to lose the weight. But I was watching all these channels, consuming all this content. I, I didn't know where to start. So he was like, yeah, I'm about to do this 40-day water fast. And in my, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Honestly, I didn't believe it because I'm like, 40 days, that's some Jesus stuff, you you know. <laughs> but this is my brother. So he started, he did one week. And every time I see him, I say, hey, how's the water fast going? Hey, fine. Uh, 14 days, how's the water fast going? Phenomenal. Hey, 21 days, how's the water fast going? Great. By the time we reached 28 days, I had to ask him. I'm like, dude, you mean to tell me you didn't eat nothing for 28 days? You just drank water? He was like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm starting tomorrow. Because my mindset was like, yo, this is a guy, we slept on the same bed till we were 15. Like, we made of the same family DNA. If he can do this, click, I can do it too. So I start. But towards the end of it, for me, the water fast was a struggle because I ended up doing 37 days. By the time I got to 37, I had to do some Gatorade, some Powerade, something with electrolytes. So I managed to push through to the 40 days, but it was a struggle towards the end. So I lost 65 pounds. Dylan, I took pictures before and after. Everybody say, congratulations, you hey, you did great. Like I was a supermodel for like six months, bro. And then I went back to the smoking, the drinking, <laughs> the meat eating. I gained all the weight back, bro. And when I gained all the weight back, to be honest with you, I love myself whether I'm fat or skinny. I, I'm not a narcissist, but I'm in love with myself. Like I love who I am. I love what I look like. But recently, I think it was like in November, I took this picture uh, with the school that I worked for and I looked at it for the first time in my life. I was disgusted at looking at something that looks like me. I didn't like what I saw. And I was like, wow, I, I, I got to change that. So I put on my vision board that I needed to do a 40 day prayer and fasting. So that's pretty much in a nutshell how I embarked on the journey. But I didn't know it was going to be juice. I just wanted to do anything. And when I say anything, I even contemplated surgery whatever i had to do i had to change that guy to turn roberto into what you're seeing here today roberto mm. that's how it all started awesome yeah so it started with a water fast and then it so that did you find that more difficult than the juicing absolutely absolutely but they have very similarity in the first two three weeks similarity in a sense where you craving things that you never thought existed like i want to eat some duck right now i wonder what some snails would take like like you wondering what a frog would take like like stuff that you never even consumed before but you you like they popping up in your mind because all your mind is doing is trying to trick you into thinking about food like you 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 obsessed with the idea of food because your body is detoxing so that that's first two weeks to me is the struggle if you can break through whether it's the juice or is the water fast, if you can break through the first two weeks, I feel like you will be in a good space. You will be able to break through, period. 
Mm. Yeah, definitely. So then how did you actually get started with juicing? Like, did you watch many videos or did you just dive in? Like, like man, how, yeah. Dylan, I consume so many videos of juicing. I probably mm -hmm. dis know these personalities. I probably know their social security, their blood type. Like I consume so much content and I was watching it, but it, it, it's like the algorithm was fitting it to me. It was just fitting yeah. it to me and I was consuming this content, raw vegan content, juice fasting, water fasting. And I was just not in a, not obsessive way, but I was just watching and watching and watching and watching. And then it clicks. I'm like, hey, that might be it. It might be a water fast. Maybe uh, in my in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, water was a little bit brutal. If I get the nutrient out of juicing, I get the taste, I get the flavor. Maybe that might be a little easier. And it was exactly that. It was a little bit easier than the water fast. Mm. Yeah. And I'm curious. So like what, what benefits did you experience on the juice fast? So like, obviously you've had the weight loss, but, but what kind of things happened on, on your journey? Well, let's talk about physically, physically, that's obvious the weight, the weight loss, you know, we did about, uh, one, one and a half pounds for the first 30 days. So pretty much if you meet me a month before, uh, I, I started officially at 276 pounds. And the reason I say that is because that's the last marker that I have. But I'm sure I was a little bit heavier than that. Because like three three weeks to a month, I, I weighed myself and I was 276. So by the time I started the juice fast, I didn't get to measure myself. So I used that previous marker as 276. So physically, losing the weight was amazing. The first 30 days, I lost 30 pounds. The first 40 days... Like go like to like 45 pounds. So your body start to transform. And the second aspect is mentally, my the clarity of mind that I had, like I really felt like Superman because I can sleep five hours a night and I can wake up and do all my fatherly duty. I never miss a day at work. I never sleep more than six hours. And I do everything that a man at, at my stature is supposed to do as far as being a father, a husband, like people ask me about my manhood, like did that decline? No, it was the contrary because I think the weight pretty much reduced your ability to perform sexually. So physically, sexually, spiritually, I didn't have any big conspiracy theorist moment, but as far as the clarity of mind that I experienced, I was able to concentrate on writing music, writing books and concentrate on business venture and everything I put on my vision board as far as getting raised for my job, learning Spanish, I was able to find time and energy to accomplish all that. So I would say the benefit, the most that I would stress the most is the discipline and the clarity of mind. And I would explain why that works for me, why I think. And this is me trying to make sense of it. I'm not an expert or anything. I think when your body don't have anything to consume or to spend the energy on, that energy then you can use it to, some, to something else. For example, your temper becomes short the first two weeks because your body's trying to detox. And a lot of times when we're doing water or juice fasting, we're not simply fasting by consuming juice. That's very easy. You put some fruit, some veggie in a blender. That's physical. Anybody can do that. But what you're trying to fast from is the environment, is the people, and its situations. Mm. That's what you're trying to fast from because the juice itself is going to do its job. Now, if you smoke, if you're an addict and then you have a good friend, every time you get together, what you do together, smoke is what keeps you. If you have a good friend, every time you get together, food is the glue that keeps you guys together. You might have to fast from that friend, from that location when you embark on a water or a juice fast. So pretty much the buck of the job is not the actual physical juice, the blending it, the making it, the drinking it. It's pretty much the environment that you're trying to build and the discipline itself. So that's what I've learned as far as that's going to be beneficial for people to learn. And that's what was beneficial for me is the clarity of mind. It's like a spiritual awakening that you can actually do anything because most people, the medical community say you're supposed to consume this, that a day to be healthy. And then there are people like myself who have experienced honestly and transparently that it can be done otherwise. That, that was my experience. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot, for a lot of people, they're put off like doing a, a juice cleanse because they think it will take a lot of time or or yeah, it's, it's going to be too disruptive. But to hear that you did it with like a job, being a family man, all of these yeah. responsibilities, like how, how, yes. did you, how, how did you manage that in terms of the time and responsibilities? Time-wise, remember I mentioned that I sleep like five to six hours and I had the energy, not because I didn't want to sleep more. I love to sleep, but it's just like I would set my alarm clock to wake up at like 5.30, 6 o'clock and I would beat the alarm clock. 
And I was wonder at first, like, is this like a disadvantage? But I felt the energy on the second month. I start thinking like, OK, my, my belly doesn't have anything to digest. You know, a lot of your energy goes into digesting food. So that's probably why I'm so full of energy. And I was like a little kid. Like I, I, I wash dishes. I do this. I do the laundry. I take the kids. I'm, I'm driving here. I'm going to games there. And I was like unstoppable. And I didn't understand. So my process was I wanted to fall in love with the process. So I would wake up. And it would take me 30 minutes to do the juice itself. I didn't batch it. I didn't store it. I would literally wake up every day and make my juice fresh. And I don't know if I can mention the, the juicer that I used at the time, yeah, sure, if you sure. have any affiliation with any juicer. But I don't know if you're familiar with Jack Lane in the UK. But Jack Lane was the first person I see on in infomercials that was introducing juicing to the masses in a grand scale. So he was like an older white guy, and he used to promote the juicer that carries his name, Jack Lelane. And I remember that time I he used to come on TV, and we bought one. I think it was like back in 2003. So this juicer, technically, I had it for the longest. I, I always say I have the oldest juicer in the game. and But I barely used it. It was wrapped in a plastic bag. It was under the counter. We never used it. So by the time I thought about juice fasting, I'm like, wow, I need a juicer. Then I thought about, oh, my God, I got this 20-year-old juicer here. Boom, pull it out of the bag, dust it off. Boom, we embarked on the juicing journey. So technically, for the people who saying, hey, this is going to be hard, this is going to be, yo, I did this with a 20-year-old juicer, bro. And you could get a used juicer. Like right now, technology has evolved so much where you can go and team on any Chinese websites on Alibaba and find $100. You can even pay an ins on installment and buy you a juicer. So that wasn't no hard part. So I fell in love with the process of juicing. Like I enjoy waking up in the morning and seeing my kids be like, oh, daddy, what you making today? Let me let me test it. Let me have some. And I was experiencing with everything. Remember, I went into this blind. I wasn't educated. I didn't know what kind of juice to do. Of course, I was aware of the lemon ginger blast because it's a it's a staple in the juicing community. But as far as everything else, I had to literally be a a, a scientist and experiment with different type of juice. And in six months, I didn't become an expert, but I become very knowledgeable as far as what works for me and what didn't work. So I fell in love with the process of making juice. So for the people who think this is going to be a hard thing, don't re fall in love with the process. It's kind of like when the basketball player, when the athletes say, fall in love with practice and then the game will be easy. I think that's the part of it. Like if you're going to juice, first thing you got to do is fall in love with the act of juicing itself. And then th that will show you so much about the whole process and then you will love it. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree 100%. It's, it's got to be an enjoyable process. Otherwise, you're just not going to, you're not going to get the full benefits. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So how much people probably wondering, like how much you, you drank? Um, obviously, this varies, but how, how did that uh, differ like from the start compared to like when you were near in the end? Were you drinking like different amounts? Yes. In the very beginning, I didn't know how much to drink. But based on mm -hmm. the video I watched, a lot of people were saying a gallon and that's 128 ounces. And the, the jars that I present in my video, the big mason jars, I don't know if you call it the same in the UK, the big clear glass jars. Uh, we call yeah. it mason jar here for the sake of names. Exactly. So I had 270 ounces one. So that's 140. But I would normally consume the extra in the morning and I would take one to work. And when I come back home, I drink the other one. So it was pretty much over 150 ounces. So if you want to look at that as far as gallon, it was over a gallon a day towards the beginning. So now towards the end, I became sat saturated, not saturated, but satisfied to the point where I feel like I didn't need that much juice. By the time we reached day 150, I was drinking less juice. Now, I don't know. I didn't want to be dehydrated. Sometimes I was forced. My, I would force myself to drink it. But as far as the need and the want was pretty much, you know, declining towards the end of it all. Mm, yeah. And in terms of the actual journey of juice fasting, did you have like a time frame? I know you said you didn't really plan things out, but the, my um, my original my I'm sorry, please continue. No, no, that, that's that's done. My my initial plan was on my vision board: forty days prayer fasting. So if you want to put that in perspective, so my thought in my head, I'm thinking, okay, you about to do forty days. But I felt so good, man. By the time I reached day 20, I felt like I was on fire. I felt like my energy was spiking. And I'm like, I'm going to keep this going. 
And I was posting like one dimensional little uh, uh, notes on, on social platform, like, you know, day one and I post a quote, juice fast. And then by the time I start reaching day 15, 20, people around me and people who follow me, they, they started to get curious. They're like, no, bro, we want to see the juice. Like, and I'm like, I'm thinking, man, if I go post that juice and I didn't reach my goal, it's not going to be, it's going to be like a sign of failure. So let me reach my goal, which was 40 days. And then I will start pretty much the rest will be bragging rights. But let me accomplish the original goal because on my mind, in my mind, I'm thinking 40 days prayer and fasting. So I would use those quotes, those motivational quotes. That, that was like my prayer. And I, was, I would literally post my prayer, what I pray for today. Like I would pray for gratitude. I would pray for financial security. I would pray for my family. I would pray for authentic friendship. Like I would post every day what I actually pray for with the juice message. And by the time, as promised, by the time I reached 40 days, I started making videos. I remember posting my first video, but by then I was already 40 pounds lighter. So people at work, they were seeing the transformation and every day I would post what kind of juice. And every week I would do a weekly scale check. And also if I go do my glucose test, go to a nurse, to a doctor, I would post pretty much the whole journey for the whole world to see. And that's how I was able to document everything online on a daily basis. Just politely jumping in to share that if you want my exact workout routine that took me from 130 pounds after a lot of cleansing and fasting to 156 pounds over the course of about six months now, then you can find that top link in the description and that's completely free. But anyway, enjoy the rest of the conversation. Peace and love. Mm, yeah, amazing. And as your, I know like Instagram is like one of your main platforms. So is that just literally grown since the start of your journey? Prior to that, you weren't you weren't like creating content. Prior to that, I would say I started this journey. I was like at ten thousand because I was a content creator. We were making comedy skates, uh, but before COVID, so we were making viral skates. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of skates that I have that reach five million views that people probably won't recognize me from anymore because of the weight difference. But that's yeah. pretty much how my social media platform started to grow. Understand, like you know, I'm married, I have children, and the content was a little bit raw as far as the content of it. And, you know, we was we was aiming for comedy. We was going for laughs. We didn't care who we offend. We didn't care about the language. So and then I wanted to change that aspect, but I didn't know how to coordinate that that transition. So juicing was pretty much like a new life. It gave me new content. And by the time I start posting that slowly, the, the, the comedian, the musician start to fade away and then the juice God starts to prevail. And that's pretty much what happened. And, and then I probably go from 10.5 and now I think it's at 12.7. So every time I do an interview with somebody, I did one with Jillian Berry. I did one with uh, Healthy Alternative Chris. And um, I did one with Sheree. So I did a few interviews. Every time I do one, I would get 500 followers, 1,000 followers. And it keeps growing every day. And I find a community. I met, I met people like you that if it wasn't for Juice, I probably wouldn't even know you existed. It's kind of like that created a glue because remember I told you I was praying for authentic friendship. I'm, I'm literally praying for certain things. I'm attracting juicers. I'm attracting people. I'm attracting community. And I wanted to do something not just to make you laugh. I, of course, I think in my videos, it's in my nature to be funny. But now that's not the ultimate goal. I think the goal is to pretty much to promote a positive message as far as health, wellness, exercise, juicing, raw vegan lifestyle healthy overall and that's what i wanted to represent and so far that life is being manifested and it's attracting all the people that that are needed to make that happen mm, absolutely yeah i think it's a very powerful message um like you say like it can genuinely transform people's lives and you're like, yeah. living proof of that like it's transformed your life um, yes how do you feel about i know you've talked about manifesting in the past but yeah how, how has manifesting been for you since like juicing and I'm going to highlight this question and I will give you credit. You ask a lot of great questions, but we're going to highlight this one as the best question you ask. Because to me, to me, Roberto Michelle, I don't know why everybody else fast, but what I have learned and what I have always felt, which I'm still not able to justify or to figure out, fasting and manifestation goes hand in hand. Anybody who want to argue that? Don't argue with me because I'm experiencing that. And I would say it like this. 
Think about all the biblical figures, everybody in the holy books, whether in the Quran and all the religious figures, they always use fasting when they pray. And we can say that in, in most cases, they get what they want. So we can say manifesting, or if you want to use the word pray for lack of a better word, goes in and in because all these people, when you think about Dick Gregory and you think about Jesus, Muhammad, like, you know, Gandhi, Everybody that fasts to actually manifest something actually get what they want. And I was I watch a lot of fasting video also. And the most profound statement that I've heard is one man say, when you pray while you fast, it's like you cut in front of the line. It's got God, God has a line. A lot of people in line. One, two, three. You in line too. But everybody who's not fasting, they just stay in line. When you fast, he was like, oh, I see you, son. Come over here real quick. You cut in front of the line. So I think there is a huge connection between praying and fasting, and I was able to write a book about it. I will never release that book unless I can find proof. I'm talking about solid evidence, scientific evidence that there is a connection between fasting and manifesting. And so far, for my own personal life and conclusion, I can tell you I have manifested, including this interview, including the people that I'm praying for in my life, including uh, J. Ian Barry gifting me a juicer, including uh, me going back to school, learning a new language, people gifting me things that is just by grace. I don't think I deserve it, but they are being manifested on a daily basis. And I don't think, I think a year from now, when you look back, if we do another interview, you're going to say, hey, I remember talking about this and now you're living it. So my life is about manifesting to the point where I didn't even want to break the fast. I broke the fast because of family and societal pressure. Because when you have a family and you're not eating with your kids and your wife, it's a little weird, honestly. It's a little weird because every society, our society, food becomes the staple. It's the glue that keeps everything together. You cannot name one event right now that does not include food, including funerals. Including funerals. So everything that we do, you go to a barbecue. Forgive me for the noise disturbance, by the way. It's, it's a plane passing by. No, it's fine. Okay. Family reunion, you go to the club, you go to a, a christening, you go to a funeral. Everywhere that there are more than one human being, there is food involved. So food is pretty much the glue. So as far as a family, we've been eating together, praying together, and then now all of a sudden you're going to juice and we're going to watch you not eat and you watch us pray to eat. So it became a little weird. So I'm like, you know what? Six months is enough. But I didn't stop it because I was tired because I, I, I wanted to stop juicing. No, I never felt better in my whole entire life mm, yeah 100 percent. it's amazing the cultural programming and yeah just society like especially the social situations like so many people they say like oh i would go brawl or i would juice if it wasn't for like social situations is, is the sun too much on my face no no you're glowing <laughs> <laughs> um so how did you how did you handle like the social situations and like yeah being around family friends like how was it for you Yes, like, like we, we, we touched on it a little bit before. The hardest part of the fast is the societal pressure, is the peer pressure. Because, but I never took it like it's coming from a place of hate and discouragement. Because you have to understand those people, they've been through the same mental process that you've been through. Everything you learn about nutrition and food, they have learned the same. So if they're looking at you losing weight in a way that they think is unhealthy, they're going to intervene to the best way possible. So I have two ways of look, looking at it. I can look at it like, man, these people are trying to stop my flow. They're trying to hate. Or I can look at it, no, they really love me and they want me to do good. But at the, at the end of the day, it was a very heavy pressure for me to decide, okay, I have to listen to myself. I have to listen to my heart and make decisions that are better for me. So mom had something to say. I had to ignore mom. I'm sorry, mom. I love you, but I had to say I feel good and I check my weight. I go to a doctor. I didn't know. Who, I took all the necessary measures and I'm, and I'm feeling myself and I follow a lot of people that have done it before. And I'm like, you know what? I feel good. And I had to listen to my wife. She's a naturopathic doctor. Of course, that's not her path. I'm not going to force that on her. And she did it 14 days with me, by the way, the first two weeks. She did it and lost 17 pounds. So, but she wasn't willing to go the long play. But me, I was, my, my focus was, uh, let me tell you about my focus, bro. I don't know anything that could have pulled me away from that journey. My focus was like this. 
I, I was focused. And the main thing to me was the mental focus that I had to just keep going. And even when I got tired, I was willing to say one day at a time, wait till the next day. And I managed to keep pushing and keep pushing. But societal pressure, how I dealt with it, I respectfully ignored everybody. But I don't think they were coming from a place of dislike or hate. It's just pure love, except they were trained the way we were trained. This is not healthy. So they were looking out for me. And I get it. I understand it. I appreciate it. But I had to say, no, thanks. I'm juicing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely it is a it's a great trait to have, like the discipline and the focus and and just like steadfast in, in, in that direction. Like once you set your mind on like a, achieving something, um, how how do you how does someone like cultivate that? How does someone adopt that mindset? Are there any like habits or tips that kept you going? Because for a lot of people, they want to commit to these things, but they can't they can't stick to it once they make make a, a set a goal. You know. So how how do you do it? Congratulations! Another phenomenal question. And I would answer this to the best of my ability based on my personal experience. Mm -hmm. Kanye West says, well, he's not the best person to quote, but he's still my person. He's my guy. He say a lot of times it's, it's not the things that you power is not the things that you say yes to. Sometimes it's the things that you say no to. It's your ability to say no. Because think about it this way. We talked before how food and consuming period is an integral part of our society. So I don't care if you live in the UK, I'm in the US, I'm originally from Haiti, step out of your side, your house right now. 80% of the businesses you're going to see is gonna be food related. Tell me I'm lying. It's gonna be food related. One way or the other is gonna have something to consume that has to do with food, 80% of it. So we are ingrained to be advertised, which is seduction. Come and buy this. Come and consume this. Big Burger saying, come on. Coca-Cola saying, come on. Chick-fil-A saying, come on. Think of every brand that put a, a, a big sign that says, come on. This is them inviting you. This is seduction. I don't want to misquote, but this is the devil. Because, you know, especially if you want to go the opposite way. And then every time you wake up, somebody's saying, hey, I got something for you. I got a burger for you. I got a pancake for you. The pancake, the chicken, this, the burger, this. this. Everybody's offering you something to eat. And then now you got to have enough will to say no. So the way I break it down is simple. Think of it this way. This is what I call a food problem. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. If you are in an impoverished country, I'm from Haiti, okay? We have impoverished problems. And there are places in Africa, all over the world, even right here in America, there are places where people are suffering with poverty. If you have issues... You cannot find food to eat. That's food problem. I'm going to repeat. If you're in a place where you're impoverished, you don't have enough nutrition, you're malnourished, you got a food problem. But if you're in a situation, the fridge is full, supermarket on every corner, big burger, big this, with that, dollar, 99 cents, food, 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 and then you eat any type of garbage, you don't have a food problem, my friend. You have a will problem. Because now you have to make up your mind, what's good for me and what do I want to eat? And how do you cultivate that will? You have to start saying no to all the things that you know. You know for sure this is not good for you. So why you can't say no? You know smoking cigarettes is bad. Like, this is, they write it on the box. It's written on the box. Like, this will kill you. But you choose to like, ah, smoke it. So you don't have a, 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 the problem you have is your will because you know it's not good for you. So you kind of like participate in, in your own degradation. It's kind of like we're the only people on the planet who's willing to participate in our own death. Every animal you're trying to kill them, they fight. Human being is the only animal you say, hey, kill yourself, eat this, and they eat it. Drink this, and they drink it. Listen to this, they listen to it. We are the only people who willingly, the only creature who willingly participate into our own destruction. So how do you fix that will? Start saying no. Yeah, there is a thousand liquor store, but remember, it's not good for you. So don't drink. So as soon as a thousand, ten thousand people in the neighborhood say we're not drinking, but there's no need for a liquor store anymore, they're gonna start disappearing. It's it's like it's like a black buster. I don't know if you had them in the UK. It's like as soon as there's no more need for a particular thing, Blackbuster was a company that used to rent VHS 
uh, yeah, video. Yeah. We have it. Here. We, well, we yeah. got it here. Yeah. There's no need for it no more. When the last time you saw one? Absolutely. So it's going to be the same for those companies that are pushing this trash down, down our throats. As soon as you make up your mind, you say you don't want this anymore. You will see them disappear because they are there because you are, you are supporting them. You're still complaining. Oh, they're not good. There's a, a this in every corner. But every time I see you, you going in. Why can't you just say, but how do you cultivate that? Learn how to say no. And I understand. I'm not taking shots at anybody. I'm not standing on a pedestal trying to look at the little guys below and be like, how come they cannot make up? The I'm coming from the same place of addiction, whether it's food, whether it's drinks, whether it's weed, whether it's all those things. So I'm not speaking from a place of uh, like I'm looking down on people, like I'm being condescending. That's not what this is. I'm, I'm speaking as far as this is how we should do it. And this is how I learned to make it. I'm still saying no to things. I'm still saying no to things right now. I still consume oil and salt. And I don't think there's any problem with salt, but I think consuming a huge amount of it can be problematic. So I, every time I fast, that's like me staying away from salt. So I still have a bunch of things in my life that I'm saying no to. So when I say the way you cultivate your will is by saying yes to the things that you want to accomplish. You want health, right? You want to be healthy. Well, you know exercise is going to help you. You know 30 minutes a day is going to help you. Give that to yourself. You know eating one raw salad a day is going to help you. Well, feed yourself that. Okay, you, you know reading a book is going to help your mind. Well, do that. If you have a dream, whether it's music, whether it's artistic, whether it's as entrepreneurial, you know investing sometimes in it is going to take you one step closer to your dream. Well, how do you do that? Well, keep step by step, step by step. I'm not saying this is an easy thing. Like you wake up one day, you go to the gym, you leave a thousand pounds. No, the guy you see with a six pack, this is somebody who dedicate their lives. They will take that two hour, that hour and a half, and they would practice these muscles. So how do you cultivate that? Step by step and juice fast, water fast, eating right. Those are the small steps. And then that's why my message is not always like, hey, go do 182 days like Toto. No, but you can replace your breakfast. Don't tell me you cannot skip one meal one day. And I'm not even saying stop eating. I'm just saying you want to build muscle, pick up the weight, go to the gym, walk a mile, walk five minutes. But if you don't, if you don't start at all and then you expect to do like a thousand pounds, it does not work like that. So to answer the question, how do you cultivate the will by giving it something to do that it can do? And then you add to it an increment and then you keep building, you keep building before you know it. You got a six pack, you got the pecs, and then you lifting the thousand pounds that you always wanted to lift. But if you want to do that in one day, I'm sorry, life does not work like that. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It's very profound for, for you personally. When did that mindset shift occur? What's, at what stage in your journey and like what was the trigger do you remember gradually i don't quite remember but i remember it's definitely after 40 days because after mm. 40 days i felt like i didn't think of no ending when i reached 40 days people were like hey how many days are you gonna do i'm like hey listen man i'm cruising right now bro i'm not thinking about no ending so and then that's when i start to continue to associate the fast with manifesting because i'm seeing how my life is changing i'm seeing the algorithm on my phone the stuff that i'm attracting because now i'm no longer a conspiracy theorist that's watching nonsense going down the rabbit hole i'm i, I can actually set my mindset okay i want to watch a raw vegan video i want to watch a juicing video i want to learn about these herbs so i'm more direct as far as my cursor what i point out and what my intention and what i'm trying to attract to me so the algorithm does the same thing the stuff that I am interested in, it keeps feeding them to me. So I was able to change that aspect of my life as far as what I surround myself with, whether the music I listen to, the people I attract in my life. And right now, the whole 2,000 people is people that know me for fasting and health. It's not for no nonsense. So they know when they come to my channel, it's going to be something, of course, it's going to be funny because that's eh, it's my personality. It's not something I can do a surgery and take out. But it's going to be for the well-being of myself and of others. So it's technically a service when you look at it. Mm. Yeah, 100%. I think it it's a good way of spreading the message and inspiring others. I think humor is yes, so sir. important. Yeah, 100%. Yes, sir. You know, life's got to be fun. Um, and yeah, are there any other like habits you do personally to like keep life fun and just stay like youthful and joyful? I don't know, man. I, I think I'm blessed. And I would say this to credit the, the source, God, whatever you want to call it. I'm blessed with a positive mindset. 
I never look at the glass half empty, bro. I never, I never look at the glass half empty. And if I do, if I look at any situation, whether, no matter how bad it is, even if there is death involved, and if I notice that I'm harboring on the negativity, I would wake myself up. I always find a positive in the worst situation. And I'm blessed with that mindset. I can, you, we can see an accident. You know how most people pull up on the side of the road, they want to see what's going on. My first thought is, I hope whoever's in that trouble is okay, has life and able to go back to their family. That's my mindset. If you're in a situation, if I watch the news and somebody's in a sticky situation, on social media, people might laugh. Oh, this is good for him. He deserved this. He deserved that. But my mindset is always like, man, I hope this guy find a way to get out of this situation. Even right now, when I see people who's a little bit overweight, that are where I used to be, or somebody who's short, because when you start fasting, the first two weeks, you're short with people. And I'm talking about short, whether it's road rage, whether it's your wife, whether it's your kids. Like, you, you're not with the nonsense. It's like, you're short. Like, hey, get to it. Say what you want to say, because I'm fasting right now. I ain't got no time. When I see people who got that type of behavior, I wish them peace. I wish they can find a place where they can realize, like, yo, it's not that serious, bro. I can still approach you with respect, whether I'm hungry or not. So I always look at everything from a positive point of view. And, and like I said, I'm a human being. Of course, we, we're prone to make mistakes. And if I catch myself thinking the opposite way, God, the source, my spirit always bring me back and be like, no, look at it from that perspective. That's why I might have to play the devil's advocate a lot of times, not to defend the negativity, but to place a human understanding to what we're looking at, because it's a human experience and you got to have grace. And I see a lot of people online who lack grace, meaning they would come from being a fat person and they would find a way to lose the weight. They would find a way to find a healthy lifestyle. And as soon as they get on the Internet, they start bashing the people who are not living the healthy lifestyle. And I'm like, yo, what kind of Nazi are you? Like you were just doing that six months ago, a year ago, 10 years ago. That was you. Like imagine somebody was talking about you that way. So now you got to have a little bit of grace got to have a little bit of grace you gotta you gotta you gotta find a way to treat people as if you understood what they going through because you you went through that you you know how hard it is to make a transition from an unhealthy to a healthy lifestyle so for all the vegan out there that are divided because i see so many types i see alkaline i see people who's doing juice fast water fast and every time the two of them mix together one of them has to say well this is not fasting Go over there. Go over here. This is what fasting is. It's so divisive. And I'm looking at it. Why can't you just look at it like this group of people here wants to be healthy? Now, how do they go about it? Is it for you to say? I don't know. Maybe your way works. But it haven't been scientifically proven that raw vegan is the ultimate way to live eternal life. It works for me right now. And there's a lot of people who eat meat who probably enjoying their life and live a healthy life. So when I watch the Blue Zone documentary of people who's living life, some people smoke cigarettes, they drink wine. Who am I to say, oh, this guy is doing it wrong? All I know, all I can tell you, this is working for me. I'm loving it. I enjoy it. And if you try it, I hope it works for you. But I'm not going to be somebody who's going to come from a negative mindset to be like one of those Ah, why are you doing this? You're doing this wrong. You should do it. No, nah, you, you're not going to find this character out of me because I don't like it when I see it because I think it's very divisive. Mm, 100%. There's a lot of labels and divisiveness yeah, online, no, like yeah, and dogma and yeah, just people like enough. defending like belief systems and things. It's, enough. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, no. We've we, we got to lead from a place of love and we got we got to be, yeah, we got to, just respect where everyone is on the journey. Cause like you say, you have to come from somewhere. Like if you're then bashing people who are in your situation, it's just hypocrite, hypocritical. I've like, seen it all the time. I have yeah, seen people who sure. was just eating bad six months ago. They find a way to lose their weight. And now they standing behind a microphone say, Hey, you a horrible person for killing this animal. Like, bro, have some grace. This is like a, a, a drug addicted person, like a crack addict who got clean. And now looking at the old crack is like, Oh man, look at this crackhead right here. This fool don't know this is not good. Bro, you know how hard it is to be addicted. So have some grace. Have some respect. Okay. You you came from there. It's not like you don't know what's going on. You mm. was just as addicted as everybody else. Cooked food, garbage food is the most addictive things on the planet to the point where 99.9% .9 of the planet do it. 
everybody, we all cook our food. So if I become a raw foodist now, I'm supposed to look at my brothers, my mother, my wife, my kids like heathens. Like, oh, they don't know what's good for them. Nah, bro. Like, we, we went the wrong way. At least that's what I think. But I'm not going to look at them like, yo, they, they all got it wrong. It's just, it's just another journey. And I do what's best for me. And so far, it's working. And I'm happy about it. Mm. 100%. Yeah, we've got to inspire others and pick up others around us instead of like running them down or like, yeah, just being really Big facts. argumentative. Big facts. Yeah, just going to push them the other way. Um, Big I facts. think that's why people like you, you know, because you've got the humor, you've got the energy. And yeah, it, it's going to bring people to the movement. If they see someone vibrant, energetic, like they're going to want to be, you know, they're going to want some of that. But if they see some like angry guy, they're gonna be like, nah. <laughs> and and that's that's what I think. That's why I think this whole journey is supposed to be about being alive, finding life, and to 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 radiate the life that you find. Because Tupac Shakur, before he died, he made a statement and say, if God give you the voltage, you don't use it, he's gonna punish you for it. Now I don't know what your belief system is, but you can use the universe, source, Buddha, Allah, whatever form you want to give this, you know powerful force if he gives you power and he gives you voltage he gives you brilliance and then you take your light you put it under a bed you're gonna pay for that because light is supposed to shine you're supposed to shine so it's kind of like you have this microphone here you have a duty to spread whatever message whatever you represent whatever you mean whatever you think is your light you put your headphone on stand in front of the show microphone and you say yeah you know what this is my ministry this is my podcast i'm spreading my love i'm playing my part in the wellness community that way so god is not going to punish you and and i'll give you my blessing right now for your channel to grow for your channel to become a staple for it to become as big as your mind imagined and for you as a person to become the person that you dream to be that's going to be beneficial for you your family and the people that you're trying to influence this is my blessing for you my brother yeah man i appreciate that but yeah i think that's the thing in life like everyone can fulfill their potential it's not like a, a people say like a zero sum game so like one person yeah. wins one person loses but no we can all we can all live our best life um, that's the that's the duality of the mind the duality of the mind because i also enjoy the duality because it makes life fun you know With, without that i think there's a level that we learn but i think we're living the duality we're leaving that path because it, it, it gets to the point where the game is not fun anymore. Duality was supposed to make life fun. Okay, when the game is over, if the Bulls beat the Spurs, we're supposed to shake hands after the game and congratulate the winner. When it gets to the point where now, oh man, he won the trophy, I hit his guts, I got to kill him, the game is not fun anymore. And we get to that point now, to the point when the game is over, we don't even play fair anymore. We don't even shake hands and be like, nice game. Like, we forgot, like, we're living in the game. We forgot that, yo, God is a comedian. He's a playwright, and he wants everybody, no matter what role he gives you to play, he wants you to enjoy your role and play to the best of your ability. Now, if you don't like your role, you can always write a petition like, Lord, listen, man, you got me playing a crackhead in this lifetime. I don't enjoy this. Like me, he had me playing a fat guy for the last five, ten years. <laughs> And I had to put it on a vision board and write a petition to the Lord and be like, Lord, listen, man, I've been playing this role now. Do you have a 175 role that I can play? Can you put me in a 175 pound role where I can play? Because he's a comedian. He write the play. He can erase the old role and give you a new role. And then people don't understand like they can create, recreate and manifest. Pray for it. However you want to do it. And I'm somebody who's enjoying this journey. Like, bro, like I told you. And I live this. I never look at the situation and harbor on the negative part of it because I always think there's an opportunity for me to come from there. That's why I survive every situation from mental health, from physical health, from spiritual problems. Like, I'm 43 years old, bro, and I went back to school. I'm 43 years old. I'm learning a new language. I'm building businesses. I'm writing books. Who says where I'm going to be the next interview we do, where I'm going to be? I might be a millionaire. I might be a billionaire. I might be a philanthropist. I don't know. But all I know is in my mind, I'm thinking nothing but greatness for myself, my family and others. That's where my mind is. I'm thinking greatness. I'm thinking health. I'm thinking positivity. And that's what I pray God for, because my whole past life, I was living, oh, drink, smoke, this, that. And 
you, you see where it takes me. I wasn't happy. But I never cursed God. I never be like, oh, why me? I still had fun doing what I was doing. A lot of it, even if it was unhealthy, it was still fun now. I'm not going to be a hypocrite here. A lot of neg the negative lifestyle was still fun. Let's be honest. That's what it is. But I feel like we can change our role. When we have a role in this movie of life, we can ask the director, hey, listen, man, you had me playing this for a minute now, a broke guy for a minute, man. I want to I want to experience some money, Lord. Like, what, you got another role with some money? Okay, I've been this weight now for a minute. You got 170. I cannot drop 100 pounds and be a skin. Wear size 30 for a second. And then and, and bro, if you do it with enough gratitude, enough grace, and I believe it's, it's going to happen. And so far, I'm a living testimony. So I have I have to be positive, man. That's what I'm trying to say, man. If I, I'm a person who's blessed, I'm blessed, man. I live in a, I live in a great country. I have a great family. I meet great people, and I'm I'm living a great life. I don't get everything that I want. I don't have everything that I need. But overall, if I have to compare my life to people who are impoverished, who don't have any, I'm 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 rich, bro. I'm rich, so I have to radiate that brilliance. I have to radiate that laughter, that that funny, that that glow that I feel inside of me, and it's 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 authentic. It's not like a script. I don't have a. I never wrote a script for any of my videos. This is me talking, and I radiate the brilliance that I feel, and hopefully that can motivate and share that love with somebody else, shine the light on somebody else. That's my purpose. That's pretty mm -hmm. much what it. That's why when people say, "Hey, do you sell the juice?" Like, bro, let me tell you, man, juice is the easiest thing to make. You don't need somebody to sell you juice. Hey, what recipe do you use? Chat GPT, Google. They can tell you what recipe. You don't need me. You might need me for that light. You might need me for that motivation. You might need me to tell you this is possible. I've done it. You can do it too. But all the mechanical stuff, you can do that yourself. So when people say, I want you to coach me. No, you don't. The only way I can coach you, I can tell you how I was able to make up my mind because you have a will problem. Because if you decide that you want a juice, believe me, you're going to buy a juicer. You're not going to ask me, where do I find a juicer? Where do you find everything else? When you need your Gucci belt, you know, you, you know, you know what website to go to. So if you really wanted a juicer, you think you'll come under my post and be like, hey, I want a juicer. Bro, you would go and Google juicer. You select based on your income, your location. You'll find a juicer. So I want people to stop playing and be serious. You have a mental problem. You have a mind issue. Your mind is not made up. That's why you're not juicing. That's why you're not exercising. That's why you're not eating right. So if there is, it, if there is anything I want to focus on as far as my journey is how, how I can help you change your mind. That's why when people say, hey, sell me this, send me this recipe, I'm like, dude, you can do that yourself. The only thing I can sell you is the message, which is what my focus is. It's the ministry of juice. It's the gospel of juice. That's the message I preach. So, but everything else, I feel like you online already, you can Google, charge GPG, how much is a juicer, how much, that's easy. Let's work on the will because that's the most important part of this journey. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Let's let's say someone now feels inspired, like they they feel like they want to make a change. They don't want to play the role anymore of like the overweight, you know, depressed uh, individual or, or whatever, wherever they are. Um, how how would you, are there are any like tips you'd have just based on your experience for getting started? Any, based like, based on my experience, sorry yeah. to interrupt. Based on my experience, sign the contract with yourself, and I will explain. This decision right here. Dylan is not going to come to your house and put some juice in your mouth and be like, hey, swallow this thing. Roberto is not going to do that. Toto is not going to do that. Let's be honest. I'm not going to come to your crib and be like, hey, it's 9 a.m. Time to juice. That's not going to happen. So technically, it's going to be a decision that you make. It's going to be a unwritten contract that you're going to. It can be written, too, because you can write it down, whether in the form of a journal, in the form of a vision board. Hey, I want to do 10 days of juice fast. You write it down. So technically it was on your mind. Yeah, you bring it to the second part. It's 369. It comes from your mind. You, you thought about it. Now you bring it to the physical world. And then now you're going to do the physical work to get to the manifestation part of it. So the first two parts is very easy things. You thought about it already, but I bet nobody ever write it down. Nobody ever researched the type of juice they're going to drink. So to answer the question, the first thing you do in any manifestation, anything that man has created in from his mind, you work a plan and he works the plan. And now that thing exists, including the phone we're talking on, the stand, the chair, 
that came from somebody's mind. So if you want to manifest juicing, water fast, a healthy diet, bro, it's in your mind. You thought about it. Phenomenal. You got a great start. Now, write it down. On paper, vision board, your note on your phone. Now, you're on the second part. And the third part is, let's go do it, which is the hardest part. Because the first easy part, your mind is already, like, you already know what's good for you. You know, like, you've seen it work for me. I'm losing pounds in front of you. I post videos every day. I do a weight scale. Like, you watching me shrink right in front of you. So you, if you're not motivated, bro, like, when are you? In, and I'm not the only one. I'm not taking credit for this. I'm not the only one. You watching people making that transition and then you wasting time to transition. Why would you do that? You see it works or at least give it a try. At least give it a try. So the first thing you have to do, bro, take it from your mind. Okay, you thought about it. Congratulations. Now write it down. And when you write it down, don't just write, write it down. Write a plan. Hey, I, I want to I wanna research this juice. What kind of issues I'm dealing with? Am I diabetic? Like in my case, doing my juice fast, I find out that carrots wasn't good for me. But what if I didn't start and I was consuming that thing all the time and falling asleep and don't understand that then every time I, I, I juice carrots, I fall asleep. I'm talking about drunk, like I drank alcohol. I couldn't even drive. How would I know that if I didn't have that experience with food and with a personal journey like that? Because a lot of people think the coach is going to do everything. The doctor, bro, you live in your body. Shout out to the doctors. Respect to the doctors. I love them. But your consultation is maximum an hour. You live in your body 24-7. I'm not saying you should be your doctor, but if anybody should know how you feel, it should be you. So your primary doctor should be you. And I know that statement is going to be misused and misquoted. Come and fight me if you want to do that. But it's not to misquote. I'm simply saying you are the first line of defense. You live in your body. When the doctor asks you from the scale of 1 to 10, how does that feel? It's because he cannot feel it for you. So if you're the one who can feel it, well, experience. Experience. Go out there, juice. Juice work, you know. If it doesn't work, now you know. But to look at somebody's journey and refusing to start to embark on your own journey, it's kind of like, what are you doing, bro? Think about it. Congratulations. You did it. Write it down. Okay, I want to try this juice, that juice. I'm going to go to the supermarket that day. I'm going to get a juicer. Second part. And now do it. It's the only way you're going to know if it's possible, if it's doable, if you built for this. Or even if you can gradually make your way there. That's my advice. Slowly. Remember, it's a muscle. You got to build it. Okay? Nobody, everybody you see at the gym with a six-pack, you see that guy wearing the muscle shirt. Like, that guy didn't just get here last night. He's been coming here. He's been moving his body. He's been eating right. That's how he got like that. So if you just got here on your first day and you're thinking, yo, I'm about to bench press 10,000 pounds, bro, you're going to hurt yourself. Because remember, when I started the interview, I told you about my story of failure. It didn't start with a six months juicing story. It started with a fast one day here, one day there, and I did a water fast, failure, gain the weight back. Those are yo-yo life. Those are me trying and failing. It didn't start with a glorious, oh my God, this guy juiced for six months. He's a juice god now. That's not how it started. It started with failure. Man, I fell, I drank, I smoked, I got fat, I got skinny again. That's, that's how we start. So it's not always going to be glorious, even if you manifest it. There are people who are lucky, first try, they got it right. Just like life. You just, as a rookie, you win a championship. That happens sometimes. That happens. But some people... They have to play 10 years before they get to win, including Michael Jordan. They have to play seven, eight years. That happens. LeBron James, the best of them. But, you know, Magic Johnson just got there. Boom, he won. That happens sometimes. So don't compare other people's experience that close because we are all coming from a different place. Mm, yeah, absolutely. We're all on our own journeys. And like you say, like comparison, it's, it's just the, the thief of joy. Like it steals your happiness. Um, yeah. But yeah. Whereas if you're looking at you personally, like where, where am I, um, you know, am I improving day by day? Then for me, that's a, that's a great, great form of motivation. Um, yeah. And one thing I can guarantee throughout that juice fast, I can guarantee this a thousand percent, whether you fail or succeed doing a juice fast, you're going to learn something, something that's going to be beneficial, not, not the wrong way around, whether you fail or succeed, you're going to learn something. That I can guarantee it a thousand percent. 
-hmm. So this is for all the people who's on the brink, who's thinking, yo, I might die, I might do this, I'm sick, I'm diabetic, I have heart issues. I never stand on my channel and give any medical advice. I stray away from that because I'm not in a place to, to do that. I'm a DIY guy. I experience on myself and then I give testimony of how my life, what it does for me. And then hopefully that radius to encourage somebody else. But I never claim to know this for sure, to know that for sure. And for you to do it is going to work for you too. But all I know, 100%, whether you fail, whether you succeed, you're going to learn something that's going to be beneficial for you. That's a fact. Mm. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you learn something, then it's not really a true failure. You know, it's, it's actually a lesson. Um, yeah so just for you personally on your journey were there any like juices you really enjoyed or like a favorite juices um recipes or things um just for you personally okay i'll break it down for you there are two when i started i started with the lemon ginger blast in the black community uh, it was made famous by yaki awaken so i call it the yaki juice i don't know what everybody call it but i call it lemon ginger blast when i was speaking with other people so it's a combination of pineapples of, of celery of lemons, of cucumbers, and uh, apples, and celery, and there is uh, ginger and turmeric. So now, as far as portion, I know a lot of people say five stocks of celery. Me, I didn't portion anything. I just do the mixture. I, I try not to be too heavy on the ginger and the turmeric because of the spice and the bitterness. But everything else, I went long play. And sometimes I would add parsley and cilantro to it. So the first two weeks, that's what I was consuming. But when I got to like a month and a half, I posted that I went for a glucose test and the nurse asked me, hey, what did you consume before the test? And I told her I did a pineapple juice. She was, she was like, that's the worst thing you can drink when you're diabetic. So I started taking the pineapple out of that mixture and I start making it focusing on the green and everything else. So I keep the pineapple out. And by the time I went back, it went from 178 and it went down to 88 when I took the pineapple out. And I, I, I give all this experience because I don't know. Somebody, as many people who drink the pineapple when they, they find. We're coming from different places. So that's my top one. The second one, when watermelon season happens, I went on a mel watermelon crazy. I go, go mania. So for two weeks straight, I was drinking that. I'm talking about I would go and buy 10 at a time. And one whole city watermelon where I'm from is like $8.99 sometimes $7.99, I would buy eight, 10 of them at a time. And I, I would get over a gallon out of it. I mix it with lime, lemon, and I put a little bit of vanilla extract in there that gives it like, brother, I sleep five hours a night when I drink this. And for the men out there, your manhood is gonna be transformed. I don't know what language to use on your channel, but yeah, on, a what, you watermelon, on a watermelon juice, your manhood it's going to be on point. So I'm not promoting that, but I'm saying it's it's like a natural Viagra, bro. You won't even know. Your significant other won't even know like you're fasting. Like you're just going to be on point as far as that. So my two favorite, lemon ginger blast, watermelon, limes, and lemon. And I enjoy that thoroughly. But I have tried everything from bok choy to broccoli. And I post those juices. I post them. It's not like I try them and, you know, I try stuff like I ain't, I ain't never even eat. Like stuff I had to ask people, how do you, how do you, like I, I had this vegetable that is like a turnip. Like I never ate that. And I'm like, somebody say, you can juice it. I'm like, ah, juiced it. And that's pretty much what I did. So top favorite, lemon ginger blast, watermelon, lemons, limes. That's it. Mm. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I remember, I think it was last year I did seven days on watermelon. And like my breathing, like my, my, I've never been able to breathe so clearly. And like blood, yeah. flow, every, every, like the energy, like. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and you mentioned like the cost. I think for a lot of people, they they think it's too expensive to do a juice cleanse or fast or whatever you want to call it. Um, how much do you know? Like how much it costs you roughly, like per day or per week? Or the most, the most I'll give you from minimum to maximum. From minimum is a watermelon, which is like seven ninety nine, and I would buy like a bag of lemons. Which give and take, I would spend more on that. But I would say the most I would spend on the juice is the least. Is nine dollars and nine dollars meaning for a gallon for a day supply yeah so over 140 ounce because i have two jars that are 70 ounces a piece and i would drink that a day or more 
So if I get more juice, I will drink whatever the leftover is straight from the juicer, and then I will fill up the two jars to consume for the day. So a day supply over 150 ounces, I would spend nine dollars. That's the minimum. The most, the maximum I've ever spent on juice was twenty-five dollars, and I will explain. Watermelon season started. I couldn't find seeded watermelon. For the people who know, that's like a pet peeve. I didn't want to consume the GMO stuff. So I wanted to go. And one guy, he charged me $25 for a watermelon. So that's the most I spent on juice. But besides that, I think the people who complain about the price, depends on where you live. I'm located in Jersey. I think $12 a day is very doable. $12 a day. And if you want to push it to the limit for... Fifteen dollars, you can you can juice, but I think if you want a budget, you do ten dollars a day, one hundred fifty dollars every every two weeks, so three hundred dollars a month. And I'm putting that in perspective as far as when I used to eat before the juicing, uh, bagel, beef, bacon, egg, and cheese that used to cost me nine dollars. So if I'm spending ten, twelve dollars on breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I don't think that is such a bad deal because my breakfast alone used to run me eight nine dollars. So mm -hmm. that's as far as prices. The most. 25 the least is eight nine so if you put that in the middle i would say 10 12 dollars can get you juiced up for a whole day depends on where you live now mm. if you're in the caribbean if you're in africa and haiti somewhere man five six dollars bro you should be able to get your juice off and that's the way to get your groove on that's it mm. yeah and it's an investment like in your health and you know, oh, medical man. bills are in the States, oh, they're, man. they're a fortune. Like, And for the people who talk about the juicers are expensive, for somebody like me who did six months on one juicer, if you were to spend $150 on a juicer, by the, you can pay, it'll be worth it. Even if you pay it by increment, if you pay it by installment, if you have to pay $25 every paycheck. Like, Don't, don't come to me with that impossibility mindset. Come to me with the idea like, yo, I want to do this and the universe is going to find a way to bring that in your life. Like, look at me. I was gifted a new five, six hundred dollar juicer. I w it was gifted to me. It's, it's gifted to me. And I feel I feel amazing to even say that because I used to sing. I need a Nama. Nama is what I need on my on my TikTok live. And I knew I knew somebody was going to give it to me or, or some people was going to group up and give it to me. And by the time I say this is my birthday, I want a Nama. Somebody sent me seventy five dollars. Another person sent me fifty dollars twice. Another one sent me twenty five. So I was getting gifts. I was getting ready to buy the Nama. So by the time I did the, the the interview with Jillian, she was like, "Yo, my spirit is telling me to gift you a Nama. You need a Nama." And I was like, "You better stop playing, girl." She was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna gift you a Nama." And the, five minutes later, after the interview, she sent me a screenshot. She was like, "You gonna receive it on this day?" I was like, "What?" She actually. Even when I received it, it was like an impossibility. I'm like, yo, she really gave me a freaking Nama. But I was more in disbelief of the manifestation aspect because this is something I was singing on live in front of my followers saying, I need this and y'all going to give it to me. And they did. She did. She did. Mm. So people, go, be, like if you post online right now, I want to do a juice fast. I don't have a juicer. Somebody will reach out and give you a juicer. Donate one to you. Or go mm -hmm. on, 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 on Facebook Marketspace. Like, spend $50. Go to a garage sale. You'll find a juicer. I find juicers at garage sale. Or blend it and then filter it. You can blend your juice and then buy a filter and filter it and get your juice on. So don't, like, a $20, $30 blender can get you started. So don't let nothing stop you. I want people to think, like, prosperity, positivity. Like, I, I don't, don't think, like, don't come to me with that mindset. I want to do this, but but what? A juicer? Like you live in the UK, you live in America, you telling me a juicer is standing between you and a juice fast? Like, do you know how lame this sounds? So technically, you're just telling me, like, I want to do this, but I don't want to do it. That's what you tell me, because a juicer cannot be the problem. That's like saying, but the supermarket is too far. Like, are you serious? Like, that's why you're not doing it? That's like telling the teacher, the dog ate my homework. Like, yeah, all right, all right the dog ate your homework. I get it. I don't need none of these excuses. You want to fast, bro? Just fast. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. That's why my message is about the mind. Because the fast, the supermarkets, there's farmers market, there's juicers. Like the, the 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 availability of the things is there. The things that's priceless that you need to fix is the mind, and that's why my focus is on the mind. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Where there's a will, there's a way. Like if you Amen. Set your... Say it again. Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> Amen. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. When you set your mind on something, 
it's so powerful and it's amazing it. how many people like subconsciously they've got this negative self-talk um and they're constantly reaffirming the negative things they don't want to attract so i'm out of that life bro i'm out of that life i'm thinking health i'm thinking wealth i'm thinking friendship i'm thinking harmony i'm thinking blessings i'm thinking exercise six pack you know i'm thinking stuff that i wasn't dared to think about before because that that fast teach me about possibility teach me about possibility teach me about understanding that things it's, it's possible it's possible to want to change your life and, the, and it can happen and why okay there's a, there's a question i have for the people who who don't think they can do something why not why not you like you don't think you deserve health right now why not you like you go to the gym, you see this guy with a six pack. Like you don't think, like you literally don't think, like oh man, I, I'm I'm a heathen. This guy is just a god. He deserves a sculpted body. But me, I'm just a heathen standing underneath him. I don't like you. The, the, your image of your, your thought of yourself is what allows you to think that you don't deserve all the great things life have, has to offer. Your your thoughts, your self esteem is what allows you to to harbor on negative mindset. If you think you deserve it. You go after it. You go after it unapologetically. You go. You just simply go after it. You're not gonna ask permission. You're simply just gonna go for it. You wanted to do a podcast, bro. I don't know what you went through. How'd you get the headphone, the microphone? Where are you sitting right now? Do you have your own room? Do you have your studio? Like, I don't think you was thinking all this process. You say, "Hey, bro, I have a message. I think the world needs to hear. I have a voice. Let me just put it together, and you just do it. You just do it." I don't think you was thinking, man, I want to do a podcast, but that microphone is too expensive. You know, the internet is too expensive. Where am I going to find Wi-Fi? Like, those are the people who want to harbor on the negativity. And I think me, you, and the people that are listening to us, pass that mindset. And the people who are past it, who are still not accomplishing, take it up another notch. Give your body something to do. And I'll add one thing to that, uh, on one layer to that question you asked earlier, just in case I forgot to mention it. I, I've been looking for God my whole life. I've been the Seventh Day Adventist, been Freemasonry. I've talked to uh, Jehovah Witness. I talked to everybody that has something to do with that that God concept. I've been through all those rooms, and then I remember one day I met a monk and I asked him like, "Dude, I'm looking for God." He was like, he started laughing, and it was funny to me because he was like, "Yo, bro, you you God? What you mean you're looking for God? Your mom is God. You're like, and they the one who gave birth to you." And he was like, in all your life, every time in all the holy books, God is telling you to do something. Who does he say to do it for? It's always for yourself and your, for your brothers and sisters. God don't need nothing from you, bro. Like, you, people keep thinking they got to make donations, you got to pay tithes, they got to give them food. Different. Like, he was like, every time one of those holy books talk about do something, it's for yourself and for your brothers. And when he said that, my mind exploded. And that was years ago. And he gave me another example. He was like, the body, bro. The body is associated with the spirit. The spirit and the body, the soul, we attach together. We cannot leave it for this lifetime at least. So we shed the body. So a lot of times when the spirit is trying to handle business, you have to give the body something to do because the body is like a monkey. You got to keep them busy. That's why you see all religion, they got some kind of beads. It was like you put that beads in your hand, you're rolling it and you're reciting this prayer. The mind is doing the reciting and the prayer. But if you want to keep the body quiet to let the mind and the spirit work, you got to give that freaking monkey a game to play. Give him a ball. Give him a rosary bid. And then he's rolling that shit and he'll leave you alone to go manifest greater things in the spiritual level. So a lot of times, the mistake I think we make, we let the monkey take over. It's kind of like one guy is going to leave forever. That's going to learn the whole experience of life, which is the soul. And then you have a body that's not going to last probably 100 years. You let him take control because he want to drink. He want to smoke. He want to play with shit, play ball, watch basketball games. The body want to be freaking ent entertained, bro. It's a monkey. He knows he ain't going to be here for long. That's the ego. But if you're smart, you have to live with the body. So you have to cooperate with it. If the body want to play? Well, let him play. Give them something to do. And then you can be busy. It's kind of like your kids want to freaking play in the house. I give them a ball. Give them a tablet. Give them a TV. Give them something to do. And then you can go wash dishes. Take care of important things that, are, that is going to be beneficial for the overall of the family. But if you don't do that, you have to listen to this child cry. Throwing tantrum because he didn't get to play and do childish stuff. 
What's the point? Give him something to do. Give him something to do. So a lot of times is we associated with those things. We don't find a way to give the body something to do. You got to give him something to do. That's the only way the spirit is going to be able to move on and do greater things. So if you want to fast, hey, sometimes it quiets the body down. The body's going to beg for food. It's going to be like, yo, you've been giving me cheeseburger my whole life. Ah, where's my burger? Where's my burger? It's, it's no intention. And then you're going to have to spank them. Like, yo, sit down. Be quiet. I'm not for the next two weeks, for the next six months, you're going to get juice. That's what I'm going to give you. And you got to be that disciplinarian because you're the boss. You're the parent. You're the parent. If you don't discipline that body, it's going to freaking go straight and eat burgers, smoke crack, and do everything, bro. You better discipline that child because he's a child compared to the soul. The soul is doing an eternal journey. That body is only here for like a, a short amount. It's finite. So why would the infinite let the finite rule the show? Why would you do that? Why would you let the body control the journey of the soul? So that's where I'm at right now. And you see how long ago that was? That's damn near 20 years this guy told me that. And then now I'm able to understand like, damn, don't, don't let that body lead you astray, bro. It's going to get fat. It's going to want to smoke weed, smoke cigarette, have sex, touching yourself. Like it's a monkey. He wants pleasures. He wants the physical pleasures. But there's got to be an adult in the room. And in and, and that case, your soul is going to... It's, doing an eternal journey why would it let this freaking body that's only here for like 100 120 years max run the show why would you do that that's like the parents who aren't disciplining their kids you got to discipline you got to let them know like no i'm i'm the boss here i'm the parent and we're gonna run this house the way that i see fit because most of the time in most cases the parents knows best just wanted to add that mm. yeah nice yeah i think that's a good good message is so it's so funny isn't it like the mind and the body and yeah the the it, and it's it's amazing how you can hear like wisdom and at the time it doesn't really resonate but then no. like all these years later then it then all of a sudden like when yeah. once that switch flicks it's just it, uh, yeah and that's what i learned doing that juice fast i actually learned I, I can do anything i can actually focus my mind on the business and I make the plan, I write the plan, I create the name, I bought the domain name. Like you do all the necessary steps because it leaves your mind already. Now you put it on paper. So now whether it manifests or not, only the source knows. But we're going to do the steps. The, the final process, like when you plant a seed, you put it on the ground. Like you think about planting a seed. You go, you buy the seeds or somebody gift it to you or you go to the forest and grab it. And then your job is to dig the dirt and plant it. Now the process of growing it, that's nature. That's in the hands of nature. You understand what I'm saying? So a lot of times people people are overthinking that process. No, you already think about fasting. You already think about a healthy journey. Okay, good job. You got the first part down. Now let's write it down. Let's make a plan. It's like I have a, a, a seven-year-old who comes to me. He say he wants to be famous. He want to have a YouTube channel. And I say, what do you want to be famous for? It's got to be a reason because right now you can shoot somebody and become famous. That's not what we want. I want you to write a plan why you want to be famous and write down the plan on how we're going to get there. And so far, he came up with the idea. And every day he comes, Daddy, when are we going to do the YouTube channel? I was like, you haven't gotten to this step number two yet. We haven't decided what you're going to do to sell yourself to gain the fame that you say you want. Because if we, if we don't do that, then you can, you're just going to be a fame-hungry person that's going to take off your pants just to get clickbaits and you're going to do the craziest thing to get fame because you weren't regimented to decide this is the message that I want. This is the, the image that I want to present to the people. You didn't think about that because fame was in the forefront of your mind. But if you do that, we write that down and we pick the name of the channel. We create the channel. Son, you're going to have a YouTube channel. And that's the message I preach to them. That's what I practice for myself. That's what I preach to my followers. Thank it. Write it down, bring it, bring it in the real world, and then let's do it. Now, doing it is always the hardest part because thinking it, God gives you the thoughts. Everybody got millions of good ideas in their head all the time. But how many people are willing to take those ideas and, and jump it to the next level? It's a few. And then once you get to the next level, it's kind of like it's getting to the championship game. Now you pass this level, you jump to the next level. And once you get to the championship, now who's willing to stick to it? And that's how God is going to make distribution of wealth and gifted ideas because, like, who really went through the whole step? It's like going to school. Who really passed the class? And that's how he's going to make distribution as far as what, you, what you're going to receive your diploma, you're going to graduate. Like, that's how he make the distribution. I mean, that's my 
thoughts of it, of course, in a religious perspective. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Let me know when the YouTube channel's up. I'll, I'll drop in the sub. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. No, we're going to stay in touch, man. You got the number. You got the blood type. You got my social security number. You got the email. You got you got everything well, for us to stay in, in touch. Well, so. Yeah, man. Well, well, we're not we're not quite done yet. If you've got time for it. No, I'm yours. I'm yours, gang. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Um, I was just curious about um, how you how you broke the fast or the juice cleanse. Um, because obviously, sometimes people can break it too soon or with like too dense foods. So how did you do it personally? How did I break the fast? Yeah. So like when you transition from juices, I know you're on raw foods now, but how did you kind of do that? Okay, I gotta use this moment to apologize to everybody who told me, Toto, take it easy. You should break the fast very slowly. You should <laughs> eat some fruit, eat some grapes, eat some avocados, some cantaloupes, some honeydew. Start slowly, Toto. Brother, I did not listen. And I gotta apologize to these people because I made me a big salad thinking I'm going raw, it's gonna be the same thing, it's all water-based, and I'm gonna kill this salad. I killed the salad. And I posted it on social media, but what I did not post, like, it did not feel good, like, like an hour later, bro. It did not feel good. Like, I'm being transparent with you. Like, I felt like, God, hey, my stomach was hurting, <laughs> and I had to take a nap because my, my body takes so much to process the solid food. After six months of juicing, you introduce solid food to the body, it has to be something rich in water and soft. And they did warn me. My followers say, hey, bro, when you break that fast, this is what you should do. You should take it easy. I'm talking about more than 10, 15 people. I was hard-headed. And if you're watching, my apology. I'm sorry. I paid for it. I learned my lesson. So for the people who's about to break a long fast, I don't care if it's 20 days, 30 days, listen to your body. Take it easy. Don't just jump to a big salad thinking it's water-based. Your body's going to process it real fast. No. My stomach was hurting for days after i'm talking about at least three days so mm -hmm. i broke it with something called pickles i make a combination of cabbage two types the purple cabbage the green cabbage and i put spices in there including low lemon juice low salt we call it pickles in the haitian community and i post the recipe on of that in my, on my channel and i had uh lettuce and i had seaweed and i had avocados and tomatoes and i think i had some kimchi on there so it was a beautiful salad it tastes phenomenal, but an hour later, I'm like, shit, what did I do? Ugh. So, yes, I enjoy the fast. I enjoy the taste of solid food, the little salty flavor, because salt is pretty much all you miss. And that's the difference between water fasting and juice fasting, because water fasting, you, you don't get to enjoy the taste. Juice fasting, you get the taste except for the salt. So it's a big difference, but I was able to break my fast with a salad, and it was not a wise decision. Mm. yeah i think that's important advice and important yeah just you being honest there because if it can save someone else like the belly ache <laughs> no i know then, they're yeah. not gonna listen because i, I did yeah. not listen <laughs> yeah sometimes you have to learn the hard way <laughs> hey, amen i did yeah and yeah just just quickly on the on the food um like the final one on food uh how, how has it been like being raw like so obviously you know what yeah. it's been amazing man i'm having so much fun it reminds me of juicing uh, and what I mean by that as far as the experiment, because I'm not really following any guideline. I'm just yeah. going like, oh, I'm craving this. I wonder what chayote would taste like. I wonder what a raw broccoli would taste like. And I, I was lucky enough to go to a, a party, like a get together where there was like a lot of raw vegan options. I was able to try raw lasagna. I was able to try raw carrot cakes. I was able to try kale. It was so mushrooms with onions. It was so much delicacy I was able to try. And there was a, a raw wraps. And it, I was like in heaven. And I was eating for like five men that day. I loved it. I loved it. And I thought I was going to gain weight, you know, coming from a juice fast. Um, when, when by the time the juice fast over, I was at like 107, 110 pounds dropped. So I went down to like 170 pounds. Imagine I haven't been that since middle school. When I graduated high school, I was 190 pounds. And, and I will place an accent. I will underline that by saying, for the people who gain five pounds in a year thinking this is not a big deal, if you do that for 20 years, that's a whole nother human being. So when you see five pounds creeping up, don't look at it and be like, hey, this is no big deal. You better watch out. 
don't do it for too long because that's what happened to me. Somebody asked me yesterday during the interview, how did you gain the weight? I think mine happened gradually. I think it literally happens five, 10 pounds a year. And then by the time I look back, I'm like, I'm, I'm big daddy. I'm wearing triple X. I'm like, <laughs> damn, like what happened to the high school kid? Like, nah, bro, the fat just covered them. So don't let the little five, 10 pounds accumulate for three, four, five years without doing something. Because a lot of times people would go another size up, but to, to uh, transition to the end of the story is I went down to like 170 pounds. And I'm coming from wearing size 40 pants. And today I have on size 30 on me now. And I can fit the 28, depends on the brand. So it's just been an amazing transformation. Bro, I thought I was going to gain weight. Because so far it's almost three weeks since I've been consuming raw food. And I'm at 173 pounds. So I fluctuate between 175. So I'm still, the weight that I lost throughout the juice fast, I'm still at that right now. And the shirts I'm wearing, probably like a medium right now. My pants is size 30. So all my big clothes, I already trashed all of them. I didn't want to keep none of them. I took a couple pictures. I make a couple videos with the old suits. And I got rid of the whole closet. And one of my favorite store I had to sell. I went on there and bought all new clothes. And I'm, I'm a whole new man now, man. I'm, I'm enjoying this new journey. I'm enjoying this new body. And so far, raw food is working phenomenal for me and a lot of people ask me how long am i gonna keep doing it i want to my brother's been doing this for five years bro so i have real life examples of people who's been eating raw food it's just like i never made up my mind i I never thought it could be me so when i finally decided i don't think it's gonna be a hard transition because i've been living i've been seeing this guy doing this for five six years like without a problem like i said the hardest part is the societal aspect is you going to a barbecue and everybody's killing a glizzy and then you have to eat a salad that's the hardest part your family is eating chicken here and then you settle for a vegan wrap but if you can go past that you're a winner you're a winner they ultimately you're going to be the one to influence them they're not going to influence you you're not going to change your lifestyle for them they're going to look at you and be like you know what let me at least incorporate like i see my family right now my kids they asking me for salads they want to drink the juice when i make it my wife is saying can you make me a salad too so technically i'm influencing my household now instead of them influencing me so how's it going for me phenomenal bro i'm loving it every second of it how long will i do it hopefully the rest of my life but if i happen to make a change i will be transparent i will be honest but for now, I'm thinking, I, I told my followers this is a 90-day journey, but I'm enjoying it so much as far as I wasn't able to gain any weight. I eat a lot, and I'm still the same weight. And I'm like, you know what? This is probably it. This is probably it. But I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm experimenting with different flavors, with different food. I haven't been to any restaurants yet except for the get-together I mentioned before that I get to, you know, experience other people's food but i'm sure i have seen so many recipes out there that i'm willing and i cannot wait to enjoy and it's gonna be fun and i will keep posting about raw food and juice and healthy lifestyle i will keep doing that i'm i'm enjoying myself man i never thought that if i knew that early i should have done this earlier but i guess it's perfect timing for now mm. yeah awesome i think people will be excited to see your future and uh continual inspiration but um mm -hmm. do you want to quickly do the rapid fire questions no i'm all yours man the world right. is yours i just pay rent <laughs> yeah awesome right so yeah the clues in the name um just answer as quick as you can but obviously uh -huh. if you need to elaborate feel free there's no like time constraint um so yeah number one what's your favorite fruit my favorite fruit watermelon watermelon for now uh, it's mm. just for lack of not going through not well, like not being too rapid watermelon yeah. describe yourself in one word optimistic yeah nice what is one book that everyone needs to read i didn't hear that i'm sorry what is one book that everyone needs to read wow wow sorry i wasn't so rapid on that i didn't expect that no, no so many man there's so many i don't know if i can give you like a list uh yeah. So many, man. So many. 
But I, I'll tell you one that changed my life that makes me get into reading stuff. It was uh, Conversation with God. Conversation with God. And uh, what's this guy's name? It's Robert something. And I, I like Robert Greene a lot. It's 48 Laws of Power. And mm -hmm. uh, Art of War, Sun Tzu. So Conversation with God was the foundation how I start getting into reading. And 48 Laws of Power, that is more societal as far as job format, politics, and stuff like that. But it yep. was a great read for me, which I never get rid of it. And I probably own everything that he wrote so far. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Neil Donald right? Walsh, Canadian. Yes, Neil Donald Walsh. That was like years ago, like early 2000s. I think I read that. Awesome. That was what sparks a man interest for spirituality and questioning the, the world we live in. And just the title alone was phenomenal, was appealing. And it was referred to me by, by an elder. So I, I really I really enjoyed it. And I think I read the, the part two of that book also. I probably still have it right now. Nice. Yeah, I'll check it out. Uh, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received? Wow. Sorry once again for not being so rapid. I don't know, man. I received so many of them. I think it was when, when that monk told me that there is no God, I think. It's, I, I don't know if it's the best advice, but it was the most mind blowing because at that time you, you couldn't, you know, we was wrapped up in religion. We wrapped up into we couldn't think of ourselves any higher. So when he tells me that it's kind of like I'm included in the grand design, it was almost like good news. Because a lot of times pe religious people make you feel like, you know, there is a big guy up there and then you nothing. So that conversation with that monk makes me feel like, you know what, I'm part of the grand design after all. I'm, it is a big thing, but I'm part of it. I have a little bit of control. So that's the best thing I've ever heard as far as life changing. And as you can see, it takes me 20 years. And I believe less than 20 years, it was back in like 2005, 2008, to understand and to start manifesting that into my current life right now. Like, yeah, there is there is a grand design. There is a source, but I'm not outside of it. I'm, I'm in it, too. Yeah, love that. What are three things that you can't live without? Uh, breathing. That's the first one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, my family and uh, a positive outlook on life. Mm. I mm. think that keeps me grounded. Uh, of course, breathing, that's natural, that's self-explanatory. My family, because that's the, that's, the, that's the unit I consciously built. It wasn't like, you know, an accident. Well, even if it was, but it wasn't like, like a wild grass that was just going, you know, this is me and somebody else decided to build a family. And then me deciding to cultivate a positive mindset to look at the glass always half full instead of half empty. Mm. What's your greatest strength and what's your biggest weakness? So this can be like two things or like one that's like a double-edged sword. My biggest strength is, is positivity. That's my biggest strength. I love myself for it. I love the fact that I can, I'm empathetic and I'm sympathetic towards order, uh, to, towards others. I can, I can look at somebody no matter what race, what gender, what circumstance, and I can, I can feel a part of your life. A lot of things, a lot of pain, a lot of pleasure are personal, but me, I feel like I'm, I'm sensitive to others. It's almost like I, if you're happy, I can probably laugh with you. But if you're crying, you're in pain, I'm, I'm one of the people that's probably going to feel you to the point where I can cry with you. So I feel like that's my greatest strength. I'm sensitive, empathetic, sympathetic in, in the lives of others. My biggest weakness it's probably my strength. It's uh, the ability. You know, I, I, I mentioned how you should think about something, bring it to the second level, and do the third level, which is accomplishing it. It's what I'm building on right now is working on the third part. So I think that's been my biggest weakness because I've had a lot of phenomenal ideas. People always say, why don't you do this? This is great. This sounds good. I always bring it. It comes. I put it on paper. And then when it's time to actually get to the third step and make it happen and i'm voicing that because who knows that might be a way to put it out in the world where i can work on it a little more and then now this is what i'm working on it's kind of like okay my weakness is not finishing it's not being a, a finisher of great ideas because i always have them 
I'm always blessed with great ideas, but I never do the final steps. That's my weakness. Mm, love that. Uh, do you believe in having a purpose? If so, what is your purpose in life? My purpose, I believe in having a purpose, but I don't believe it's something that's innately. Well, let me not say that because it could be. It could be. But what I think my purpose is, which I'm working on constantly, is to be a voice of inspiration for others. So in other words, I'm somebody who believes like anything is possible. And I hate it when people come to me with that impossibility mindset. So even if I live in a world where I don't get everything I want, I don't manifest everything that I need, but I never think it's impossible. And I never live in a world where I, I want people to come to me with that impossibility mindset to come to me and be like, oh, I want to do this podcast, but I oh, don't know. The microphone is don't come to me with that because I live in a world that I think is abundant. But although you have some work to do to manifest the things that you want, but I don't live in a world of impossibility. So I always think my support of somebody, like if I meet anyone, I would rather give you a positive word instead of me letting you go without giving you nothing. So I think I'm very giving and I live in a world where I think anything is possible. And that's what I want my influence and my legacy to be. Like I, I was, you was able to touch me and you left with something. You didn't just meet me and then it was like a whatever moment. You have, you will remember me. Mm. Finally, what are you grateful for today? I'm grateful for you, King. I'm grateful for you. Thank you for reaching out. And I mean that. I mean that because when, you, when you're going through this journey and then you see people, there are people who respond negatively. It's not a lot of them, by the way. And my support system is phenomenal. But then again, you have people that, that respond with grace, that respond with respect. Like you, you calling me from the UK, bro from the uk bro you could have been spoken to anybody in the world right now you're speaking to me so I'm, I'm grateful i appreciate you having me it makes my heart smile and i'm i'm here for you at any given time i'm grateful for you today of course i'm grateful for everybody else for my life for my family but right now for today i'm grateful for you and for this interview yeah thank you man i appreciate that the same here i appreciate your time i appreciate everyone else's time uh where, where can people find you um, where can you uh, get in touch or check out all my website? social platforms all my social platforms are raw berto r-a-w-b-e-r-t-o dot m-i-c-h-e-l roberto michelle my real name is roberto r-o-b-e-r-t-o -E if you type that it's gonna pop up but my all my social platform my tiktok my instagram my facebook is r-a-w dot m-i-c-h-e-l and i'm working on my uh, youtube channel because my little seven-year-old he's telling me that he put everything on youtube I never thought about it because a lot of people think I should be on YouTube. You should have a podcast. I never thought about that. But lately I have. So I'm going to touch my YouTube channel and give it a new purpose. So it's coming soon. R-A-W-B-E-R-T-O-M-I-C-H-E-L. Roberto Michel. Awesome. Yeah, I'll look forward to it. I'll give you a sub as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate everyone for listening this far. I appreciate your time once again. And yeah, I wish everyone a wonderful day. Yeah. Peace and blessings. Thanks again for having me. I greatly appreciate you. And juices. <laughs>